The series opens up with a teenage girl named Yoon Ji Woo deciding to celebrate her birthday with her father. In the morning, Yoon exercises in her room while listening to music. She then gets ready and leaves her apartment for school. On her way, two police officers follow her and ask about her father, who is a criminal and drug dealer. Yoon does not reply to them and just walks away. Despite this, the officers follow her for a while and ask her to tell her father to surrender if he ever comes to her contact. Since her father's case became known to everyone, Yoon is isolated by her friends in class. They abuse her and scribble insults on her desk, calling her a daughter of a criminal. Later in the day, Yoon notices the police officers talking to the principal, and soon she is called to the office. There, the principal tells her that she needs to be expelled from school because many parents object to a criminal's daughter attending the same school as their children. Back in class, Yoon finds trash on her desk, along with a paper filled with powder. The bully girls do not stop humiliating her and suggest she go and sell narcotics like her father. Feeling angry and frustrated, Yoon attacks her friends, leading to a fight. She then gives a name card to one of her teachers and storms out of the school. Outside her house, Yoon sees the same police car waiting for her. Enraged, she attacks the car and is subsequently chased by the police officers. Yoon then runs to the beach to escape and sits down on the edge, reminiscing about her father and the time they spend together. She remembers being raised with love by her father since childhood, and she doesn't believe he's a criminal. In fact, Yoon is still waiting for her father to return and celebrate her birthday together. Later at night, when Yoon gets back home, she finds the police still waiting for her. Ignoring them, she enters the house. Meanwhile, her father, Yoon Dong-hoon, tries to call her from a payphone. At first, she ignores the call, but eventually answers it. When Dong asks how her day went and if she enjoyed her birthday with her friends, Yoon suddenly gets hyper and starts yelling at her father. She expresses her anger and blames him for all the suffering in her life. In response, her father promises to solve his problems and return to her soon. However, Yoon is already disappointed and tells him that she believes her father is dead before cutting the call short. After listening to his angry daughter, Dong Hoon gets in a car and turns on his long unused cell phone. He reads a message from Yoon expressing her miserable life. Without hesitation, he decides to go home to see her. He then asks the driver to get out of the car and drives straight to Yoon's apartment. Upon arrival, Dong incapacitates the police guard outside his house and rushes inside. He notices his untouched presence outside the door and tries to open the lock. Right then, a masked man approaches Dong from behind and shoots him. Yoon wakes up to the noise and approaches the door to investigate. Looking through the peephole, she witnesses her father getting shot by a mysterious man. She tries to open the door, but her father, concerned for her safety, holds it shut. He is doing this because he does not want the masked man to find his daughter. After he leaves, Dong Hoon apologizes to Yoon for making her life miserable and passes away outside the doorstep. Yoon desperately tries to open the door and sees her father lying lifeless and covered in blood. Overwhelmed with grief, she embraces his lifeless body and cries. The following day, it's Dong's funeral, and Yoon can be seen crying sitting in front of her father's photo. At the same time, a group of people wearing black suits, led by a man named Choi Mu Jin, arrived at the funeral home. They are the most powerful gangsters in the city, and Mu Jin, who was Dong Hoon's best friend, has come to pay his respects. Yoon asks him about her father's murder, but he simply states that her father was his most trusted friend. Before Dong's body is cremated, Yoon looks at him for the last time and reminisces about their happy times together. She cannot understand why her father suddenly chose such a dangerous path. In the next scene, Yoon goes to the police station to inquire about the progress of her father's murder case. To her dismay, she learns that the case has been closed due to a lack of witnesses or evidence. Hearing this, she gets angry at the officer and presents a blurry picture of the killer that she got from the CCTV footage. But instead, the police officer scolds her and blames her father for being a criminal on the run. Afterward, at night, Yoon visits Mu Jin's headquarters, and as she enters, she witnesses people busy counting money and packaging narcotics. She ignores everything and goes straight to Yoon's office. 
There, she hands over the blurry CCTV image to Mu Jin and asks him to find her father's killer, expressing her intention to take revenge by killing him with her own hands. In response, Mu Jin stands up and gives her a knife, challenging her to stab him. However, Yoon can't bring herself to harm or stab him, and as a result, Mu Jin slaps her hard, asking her to get out. Moving on, Yoon returns home and later hears a knock on the door. Fearfully peering through the people, she sees the same person whom she saw on the night of her father's murder. Terrified, she hides under a blanket until the person leaves. After a while, Yoon gathers courage to pursue her father's killer, carrying a golf club. She chases after the individual, but unfortunately fails to catch up. Undeterred, Yoon continues her quest by creating a poster with CCTV images and pasting it all over the city. She has also mentioned a reward of 5 million won to anyone who provides information about the person in the pictures. The next day, Mu Jin coincidentally comes across one of the posters and decides to take action. He then saves Yoon from getting robbed by local thugs and saves her life. Moved by Yoon's determination and guilt over her father, Mu Jin urges her to stop seeking revenge and live her life well. However, she refuses, determined not to let the police close her father's murder case without justice. After hearing this, as a solution, Mu Jin suggests that if she truly wants revenge, she needs to learn how to fight and kill people. He then asks Yoon to pack her belongings and takes her to a place near the sea and the harbor, where his organization trains fighters. Mu Jin informs his men present there to train Yoon, surprising them all as it's the first time a woman has expressed desire to train as a fighter with them. The next day, Jung Taiju, Mu Jin's right-hand man, disagrees with the decision to let Yoon join their organization. However, Mu Jin insists on allowing her, mentioning that she is seeking revenge for her father. After this, Yoon is assigned to clean and maintain the training ground by Do Gang Jie, one of the fighters from the club. Despite facing mistreatment from some of the men, Yoon remains determined and trains alone every night. Impressed by her perseverance, Mu Jin monitors her progress and teaches her survival techniques and weak points in the human body where she can attack. Over time, a competition is held among the gangsters to determine the strongest member who will earn a transfer and work for Mu Jin. To everyone's surprise, Yoon defeats everyone and emerges as the victor beating her opponent and rendering them unconscious. This defeat leads Gang Jie to feel humiliated and seek revenge. Later at night, someone drugs Yoon's drink, causing her to feel dizzy. Using this opportunity, Gang Jie and his friends attempt to harm her, but Yoon manages to defend herself despite her unconscious state. Taeju intervenes upon hearing the commotion and exposes Gang Jie's plan to harm Yoon. Mu Jin is disappointed in Gang Jie and punishes him by slashing his face with a sword. In the following scene, Mu Jin takes Yoon to a tavern, which was her father's favorite place, and gives her a new identity as Oh Hye Jin, stating that Yoon has been killed by Gang Jie. He also hands the gun found near her father's dead body and reveals that his father was a police officer. With this knowledge, Mu Jin enrolls Hye Jin in the police academy to uncover the truth behind her father's murder. As time passes, Hye Jin dedicates herself to intense training and becomes skilled in using different weapons. She then officially joins Mu Jin's criminal organization and gets their tattoo on her chest. It is crucial for her to stay loyal and keep her true identity a secret. After three years, Hye Jin finally enters the police academy and becomes a member of the crime unit. On her first day, she's assigned to track down a long-standing fugitive murder suspect. She asks her friend to call for backup while she enters a club where the suspect is reportedly dealing narcotics with someone else. Hye Jin successfully checks on every room and comes across one where several men are dealing in narcotic transactions. Without hesitation, she confronts them, leading to a fight. Just as the police arrive, Hye Jin successfully handcuffs the suspect. Meanwhile, John Peel Do, an undercover narcotics officer, becomes angry with Hye Jin, believing she has ruined his six-month plan. They end up fighting over the suspect, and eventually the senior intervenes and allows Peel Do to take custody of the suspect. Peel Do then expresses his anger, declaring that he never wants to see her again. Elsewhere, a gang fight breaks out 
and Mu Jin calmly walks amidst the chaos. It seems he's about to confront a former partner who has betrayed the organization by selling narcotics to others. Despite the man's pleas for mercy, Mu Jin mercilessly kills him. The following day, Ye Jin goes to Incheon police headquarters with the intention of volunteering for a transfer to the drug unit. There, she meets Captain Cha Gi Ho, and as soon as she sees her face, it triggers a memory of her father's killer. After reviewing her profile and skills, Captain Cha accepts her into his unit and announces she will officially join the team the following week. In the evening, Hye Jin visits Mu Jin to share the news of her acceptance into the drug unit. Here, Mu Jin shares the story of how Hye Jin's father saved his life when he was under attack by his rivals. He shows her a photo of that moment and gives her Dong's knife, urging her to use it to seek revenge on her father's killer. Meanwhile, at the police station, a man named Chang Ho is being interrogated. But instead of revealing information about his associates and boss, he provides details about a man named Mango, who has created a new type of narcotic in candy form. Following this, as Pil Do returns to his office room, he coincidentally runs into Hye Jin, who informs him about her acceptance into the drug unit. Pil Do protests to Captain Cha, arguing that he doesn't want a woman on his team. But the latter tries to appease him, suggesting that Hye Jin might not last more than a month. Reluctantly, Pil Do accepts Hye Jin's presence in the drug unit. In the next scene, we're shown Tae Ju, who still doubts Hye Jin's loyalty. However, Mu Jin trusts Hye Jin and sees her as a valuable asset for their organization. Moving on, Pil Do and his team start searching for the narcotic dealer named Mango, and surprisingly, he urges Hye Jin to handle the mission alone. Without objecting, she enters the suspected location and is immediately attacked by some men. It turns out that Pil Do has intentionally used Hye Jin as bait to catch Mango. But to his surprise, Hye Jin defeats almost every man in the hallway and enters a bar-like place. Although she doesn't find Mango initially, later she manages to capture him when Pil Do arrives. Mango asks about the arrest warrant, but Pil Do dismisses it with a laugh. After this, Hye Jin and Pil Do search for narcotics and discover it hidden in a wine bottle behind the bartender, leading to Mango's arrest. Later, during an interrogation, Mango reveals that a person named Gang Jae is the creator of the undetectable narcotic. Gang Jae had previously attempted to kill Yoon, but was defeated by Mu Jin, resulting in a scar on his face. It is revealed that Gang Jae left Mu Jin's group and started producing the new narcotic, attracting many buyers. Hye Jin informs Mu Jin about this. That night, Hye Jin accesses the police database to search for evidence related to her father's murder. Unfortunately, the killer wore a full-face helmet, making identification difficult. At the same time, Hye Jin discovers that Captain Cha was tasked with arresting a narcotic dealer on the day her father died, but she's unsure if it was her father. The next day, Hye Jin and the team are informed that they will go on a mission to apprehend a long-time fugitive drug dealer. Before they depart, their cell phones are collected to prevent any traitors. However, Hye Jin is shocked to learn that their target is none other than Choi Mu Jin, a major drug dealer in South Korea. Hye Jin becomes nervous and unsure about what to do. They then head to Mu Jin's secret lab on a ship, where the police have set up a careful operation to prevent his escape. Once everything is ready, they initiate the operation. Hye Jin desperately wants to warn Mu Jin about the arrest, but Pil Do keeps a close eye on her, making it impossible. However, at one point, someone fires a gun, disrupting the mission and allowing ample time for Mu Jin to escape. Amidst the chaos, Hye Jin discovers a gun she believes belonged to her father's killer. She plans to see Captain Cha's reaction when he sees the gun. Meanwhile, Mu Jin arrives at his headquarters and is furious at Hye Jin for not informing him about the mission. After a while, she repeatedly tries to contact him using a secret number, but he ignores her calls. At the police station, the officers are questioning the arrested people from the ship, but nobody wants to talk as they are scared for their lives. Captain Cha grows suspicious about the shooting involving Mu Jin and checks his team's guns only to find that none of his team members' bullet is missing. Seeing this, Hye Jin asks Pil Do why Captain Cha is so determined to catch Mu Jin. 
In reply, Pildo explains that Mu Jin has been their main target for 11 years, and he leads the biggest gang in Incheon and controls all drug trafficking in South Korea. Right then, Hye Jin sees a photo of her late father, who was Mu Jin's best friend, killed five years ago, among the other drug lords. When Hye Jin asks about it, Pildo says that they have no idea who killed Mu Jin's friend. In the next scene, Hye Jin calls Mu Jin to apologize for not informing him earlier, because the mission was so sudden that she didn't get enough time. She then reveals to him that there are three hidden cameras in his hotel, surprising Mu Jin and making him suspect a traitor in his midst. Wasting no time, Mu Jin disables all the police cameras in his hotel, making Captain Cha's team suspect that a traitor is among them. Elsewhere, drunk and excited, Gang Jae prepares for a mission he's planned for five years. He and his men attack Mu Jin's fight club, capturing Taeju but not killing him. Luckily, Captain Cha's team gets information about the commotion and arrives there. They manage to save Taeju, who is badly injured and refusing to talk. On the other hand, Mu Jin is furious about the raid on his practice area, and Secretary Kang warns him to be cautious since the place isn't legally linked to him. The police search for the attackers and find evidence of a new narcotic, but struggle to find witnesses. While this is happening, Peel Do assures Hye Jin that she does not need to be afraid, and he'll protect her in all situations. He has no idea that in the past, Hye Jin used to practice in the same fight club. The next day, Hye Jin attends Mu Jin's men's funeral, wearing a helmet to avoid being recognized. On her way home, she meets Captain Cha and Pil Do arriving at the funeral. Surprisingly, Captain Cha confronts Mu Jin at the funeral home, and their animosity is evident when the former expresses his determination to end this, tired of Mu Jin escaping. But Mu Jin confidently laughs, saying he'll never be caught and that the captain will never be able to find evidence against him. The next day, Na Dae Su, a member of the narcotics unit, finally identifies Gang Jae as the person who attacked Mu Jin's fighting club. Captain Cha recognizes Gang Jae as a former member of Mu Jin's group and believes that Mu Jin will take action now. He then orders Mango to be released as bait. Ye Jin objects, worried about the risk to many lives, but Captain Cha dismisses her concerns. Meanwhile, Mu Jin receives a message from Ye Jin, informing him about Captain Cha's plan. After reading the message, Mu Jin cancels his mission and decides to stay put. At the police station, Captain Cha and his team are puzzled by Mu Jin's lack of response. Captain Cha laughs, confident that Mu Jin will fail because there's a traitor in his organization. Right then, Mu Jin receives another message from Hye Jin, informing him about a traitor who will meet Captain Cha in a while. In a different location, Taeju finds a letter and a new type of drug in his car inviting him to meet someone who knows Gang Jae's whereabouts. Without hesitation, Taeju decides to go to the meeting. Meanwhile, Hye Jin, wearing a full face helmet, keeps an eye on Captain Cha to gather information about the traitor in Mu Jin's team. Unexpectedly, she encounters Pil Do, who attacks her, revealing that it was a trap set up by Captain Cha and Pil Do. She somehow manages to escape and reaches her apartment. Here, it's revealed that Captain Cha planned to expose the traitor in his team by using Taeju as bait. In pain, Hye Jin informs Mu Jin that Taeju has met Captain Cha and urges him to be cautious. The next morning, Hye Jin receives information about the owner of the gun used to kill her father. Filled with anger, she rushes to the office with a knife, seeking revenge. She confronts Captain Cha and asks about Zhang Su, the owner of the gun. In reply, Captain Cha reveals that Zhang Su was his best friend, who died after joining his unit, and accuses Hye Jin's father, Yoon Dong Hoon, of being the killer. Following this, Hye Jin visits Mu Jin and asks her if her father ever killed a policeman. To her surprise, he denies it and explains that Captain Cha is willing to do anything to frame them as guilty. At the police headquarters, Pil Do seems to like Hye Jin and tries to convince her to have a few drinks with him, only to get declined. However, Hye Jin has rejected the invitation because she is searching for Gang Jae secretly. Unbeknownst to her, Pil Do follows her, curious to know what she does after work. 
Unable to bear it any longer, when Hye Jin stops her car to inquire about Mango to a group, Pil Do gets into her car and questions why she's acting alone to monitor Mango. He also suspects that she has hidden motives. In reply, Hye Jin explains that she was frustrated by Mango's release despite evidence of the new drug and is determined to find out the truth. Right then, they notice Mango leaving in his car, and together they end up following the car to an old abandoned factory. Meanwhile, Gang Jie arrives at the factory for a meeting with Mango, but it turns out to be a trap set by Gang Jie himself. When Hye Jin and Pil Do are thinking about why Gang Jie arrived alone to deal with Mango, his group attacks them, indicating that Gang Jie was aware of their presence. Elsewhere, Mu Jin is sitting at a cafe, which he frequently visits and realizes that people around him are targeting him. He then decides to fight against them and takes action to protect himself. The episode ends with the scene shifting back to the factory, where after a bit of fight back and struggle, Hye Jin and Pil Do are captured by Gang Jie.